Yo, 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 welcome to another episode of Up For Discussion. This episode's a real special episode because not only is it the first video yet, yeah, number one video of 2017, I think pretty much across all my platforms of media. Also, it's a special one because it's a 2016 year review. I'm Sam, yo boy, Mama. holla, and today we're going to be discussing that up for discussion is a range of topics. So it's kind of like an award show, as we were just discussing. So we're going to be talking best movie, best TV show, best trailers, best be, best characters, best actors, you know what I mean, in all the superhero a dimension of what you know and love. <laughs> so, this is brutal. What do you mean? Brutal intro. It was great. Right. Was so, what would you like to start with, my co-anchor? Oh, let's start with I best tell you, movie. Okay, best movie. Right. Yes. So, I would like to put forward... Oh, for Christ's sake. See, can it just be personal to me? Yeah, I mean, I might disagree with you, but yeah, that's the idea. Well, I'd say Batman well, versus... We'll say... we argue it, and then... Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> We're definitely going to argue that. Can I finish my point? Can I... You have to. Go on. Batman versus Superman. Extended edition. I you don't got... get that. What, so I just did a cinematic cut? Yes. I'll take the cinematic cut then, because I'm loyal. Crazy. Nah. But go on, explain why. Well, because... I was on Facebook the other day, and I, I and I saw this kind. Of, there's a picture, and it's cut up into five sections, and it was like, and basically, the put the point of it was, that, it was like, Batman versus Superman, and like Civil War, are basically like, as a matter of perception, they're the same film. It's like. If you if it's like people like I think rely on critics too much, so I mean if someone said ah oh, this film's bad, it's like ah oh, like the the reviews gave it like twenty percent, so it's like ah oh, let's not go see that, but it's like well, I'll, who were they to dictate to me what I should and shouldn't watch? So I went to I went. We went and saw the film. I've seen it about four or five other times. I've seen the extended cut, and you want to know what I like it a lot. And it's not for someone else to tell me whether I'm going to enjoy a film or not enjoy a film. So I went. I enjoyed the film. I like it a lot. So yeah, that's why it's my film of the year. Okay, you're wrong. <laughs> Absolutely wrong. Civil War is better. Well, well, it's right. If someone, if you're like, say you're in the cinema and you're like, oh, I'm going to go watch this film, and then like an old man walks up to you and's like, oh, I heard it's not very good. Are you just going to be like, oh, I'm not going to go watch it then? Of course not. All well, that's it then. All films subjective, and subjectively, in my opinion, you're wrong. Civil uh, War is better. Okay. Better story, better build up, better execution. So if you're walking down the street. And you see, like, there's like a glint in the floor, and it's like a diamond, but it's like a not very clear diamond, and it's a bit rough around the edges. Are you just gonna not pick it up? Are you just gonna keep on walking? That's a ridiculous analogy. Are you gonna pick up the diamond or not? Yes or no? It's a yes or no question. Obviously. Well, there we go. Right, so. so Batman v Superman. He can't do it. That's not an analogy that works. In that analogy, I pick up the diamond, I'm rich. I don't get anything out of Batman v Superman being good or not, except some sort of enjoyment, which really I didn't get. It fell apart. Yeah, there were good parts of it there, but the editing, all of it, the story, some parts were good, some parts were a mess. But it, so, had, but it had, had potential. had the build up. But it had potential. Yeah, it had potential, but it didn't live up to its potential, did it? Uh, it depends. It fell short of it. It depends what you walk into cinema expecting. So what's your movie? I didn't get it. What's your film of the year then? Civil War. Nah. I think that, that they were pretty much the same thing, except Civil War was done better. Civil yes. Civil War is what Batman and Superman could have been. So in that yeah. sense, in that sense, they're both the same film. 
well, they're not the same villain because one's better. You just said it yourself. Subjective, yeah. Batman versus Superman's better. No, you literally just said Civil War is better. No, you no, said it. Oh, <laughs> I think you'll find you said it. Go back and play the tape. And I agree. Civil War is better. <laughs> okay, then. Um, since we're on, we'll cover the films. Okay, so best trailer. Are oh, we doing best it. best trailer for upcoming films? Yes. Oh, well, that's it then. Okay. Unless you, I mean, unless you want to include every trailer that come out, even for a movie that has already. We can do that. Best trailer of 2016 for a superhero film. I still think the answer's obvious, but... Yeah. It's Logan. Suicide Squad. What? <laughs> the trailer was good. Yeah, it was all right. Yeah, the music was cool. So it's it either, was. It's either in between Suicide Squad and Guardians of the Galaxy. No, it's Logan. I don't really get it. I think it's overplayed. What, what do you mean you think it's overplayed? What I, do you think, mean? I think it's a good thing that this is going to be the last Wolverine film. I think it's time for new blood. I, think, I don't disagree. Yeah. I really see... Well, because I watched a normal trailer and I watched the R-rated trailer and the only thing different is that you saw the Wolverine claws coming out the top of his head. Yeah, is that yeah I, don't, I, don't, I don't think they even needed to be there. That was just to tell people it's R rated. But overall, I think the trailer was better. It it defied what I was expecting. It music was good, the shots were good. I don't really know what's going on. I they may my only gripe with it is I think we might be proven wrong from the actual movie, but I think they may have spoiled the death of Professor Xavier at the end. But other than that. I thought it was great. As far as um, Suicide Squad, it was okay. I thought, music was cool, but I thought the Logan trailer music was good because I'm a Johnny Cash fan. But it's like, it's going to be dark, it's going to be depressing, and in the sense that it's not going to be enjoyable. The action sequences are probably going to be good, but that's only because it's R-rated. If it wasn't R-rated, if there was no R-rated cut and it just come out normally, you'd just sit there and you'd just be like, well... I don't think you'd enjoy it. I think the only enjoyable parts of it are going to be the action sequences. So, I think we'll both agree that the Suicide Squad trailer was, we won't the, agree. was the best one. Okay, so, who, who's, been, who's been the actor of the year? What, in superhero films? I mean, Affleck, probably. Really? Yeah. Right, so, you, so you pan the film, but you're bumming off Ben Affleck? Yeah, I thought it was good. So you admit that Superman vs. Batman was a better film? Superman vs. Batman doesn't exist, and Batman vs. Superman was okay, but a mess. So it's got... It's got the best actor in it, so it's the best film. The best a actor actorial portrayal, so therefore it's the best film. You fight in a losing battle. <laughs> right, so my best actor or actress... Indeed, go on. Hmm, I'd have to say... <laughs> One second. I'm gonna have to say it's Cara Delevingne for the oh, shut up. <laughs> I knew that I'd get you. I knew that I'd get you. No, and I'll tell you why. Are you serious? For her betrayal of June Moon. I'm showing love, y'all. You're out of your fucking mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for a betrayal of June Moon. I'll you, give you dancing, that's pretty funny, but aside from that... You don't yeah. think she came off vulnerable and flawed as a character? I think she portrayed that very well. No, I don't. I think the the, the only good part of the enchantress in that movie is when the first change happened. Other than that, it was a mess. Right, no. so, you, so you agree she's the best actress? No. It is. Her first mainstream Hollywood film is like a mainstream, like like a big blockbuster debut. And I think she did very well. I think she portrayed a very vulnerable June Moon. I think it was very believable. Okay, the Enchantress bits might have been sketchy, but the character of Enchantress is what we'd like to call larger than life. And I think that were, that came off a lot. I don't. I can hear myself. What do you mean? I can hear myself speaking. That's okay. <laughs> it's not okay. <laughs> You've lost your mind. Right, so... 
what do you think is the best ac action sequence? The best action set of the airport scene, Civil War. I disagree. I think the Doomsday fight. Really? There's not much to the Doomsday fight, is there? Yeah. The way he was getting smacked around was sick. Like when Doomsday first like dashes him up into the air and then just smacks him straight down and then whacks him with like the memorial stone. I think that was really good. I didn't really like the big blowy up bits where he just kind of blew up. But I think when he was smacking people around, I thought that looked really good. Because I think the thing that the DC Universe has got right is kind of like the violence of it. You saw in like Man of Steel when he was getting smacked around by the Kryptonians in Smallville. When it was just, they weren't like holding off, you know what I mean? Like most things look kind of choreographed. Whereas, whereas the Doomsday fight, it was just like literally like boom. And Superman was getting smacked around. So I was like, I like that. I thought that was good. And then obviously flying them into space, getting hit with the missile, and then kind of, see, a civil war was whack because no one died. They gave the impression that War Machine was going to die when they lasered him, but he didn't, he was just crippled. At least Superman died at the end. You know what I mean? It's not a real party until someone dies. So that's why, that's my favourite action sequence. Yeah, but I thought it was more to Civil War. You had the characters, it was funny, they still got the drama in. I'll give you Rhodey, Rhodey should have died, but... How can there be drama in it if it was funny? It's either dramatic or, it's or it's dramatic or it's funny. You can have both. I think it was conceited, so that's why Batman and Superman, the Doomsday fight, wins my vote every time. No, Civil War all day. I don't know, I think... If we were going to pick an action sequence, they're probably the only two movies that you could pick from anyway. No. Go on then, give it, give it an alternate one. Uh, Suicide Squad. You're out of your mind. There's no action sequence in Suicide Squad, that was good. Yeah, of course there was. Name one. Uh, when Captain Boomerang burst out of his bag and hit that guy. That's not an action sequence. Someone got hit, didn't they? That's not an action <laughs> sequence. Okay. It's a, man, it's a man in action, I'll give you that, but it's not an action sequence. Well, it was a sequence and there was action in it. I don't think there's, I mean, the, uh, if we're gonna, if we're gonna get away from best action sequence, they're all around best scene, then I thought the, the Quicksilver scene was pretty good. In what? Apocalypse? Yeah. Why do you always bum off the Marvel films for, man? You're not showing any love. The only love you've shown is Ben Affleck. <laughs> DC made a good film. I'll give them love as far as... And besides, it's a Fox movie, is man. Don't matter. Of course it matters. The Marvel characters? True. Jesus Christ, man, come on. The Quicksilver... The, 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 the one in... Days of Future Past. Yeah, was I said that without moving my lips. <laughs> that one was better than this one. This yeah. one was just like it was kind of forced. It was like oh, okay, we kind of hit a home run with that one. Let's kind of, you know, milk it for all it's worth. And it just oh. ca it just came off. It just came off uh, second rate. I mean, if you got if you're going for scene, it's got to be um, it. Um, in that film alone, I think it's got to be the end, where like Magneto's trapped him, and then you've got uh, the Phoenix. When she was walking on nothing, she was just she was flying, and she weren't even trying. And then she hit him with the Phoenix Force, and then it was all over, face gone. So, yeah, but by that point, I didn't really care what was going on. Quicksilver scene, Jesus Quicksilver scene was, Christ, was the best man. scene in the movie. You're just making things up now. Um, okay, what do you think was the funniest scene across the board? Oh, I mean, it's probably got to be something from Deadpool. Oh, here we go. I would say... I don't need to think. Have you got something? Well, I'd say the one where I'd say with Captain Boomerang, where he oh, where, where he smacks that woman, is pinned up against the wall, and it's like, oh yeah, I was just playing mahjong with my nan, and then a red streak just come out of nowhere and whacked me. 
I thought that one was a good one. Or Captain Boomerang when it's like to El Diablo, does that stuff on your face rub off? That was good. I think that got a lot of laughs. He was alright in the movie, but it wasn't it, that funny. I think it was the best one. Literally. That's part of the problem, is it? There's nothing to him. He's barely in the movie. If anyone asks me who my best character is in Suicide Squad, and people will chirp Harley or the Joker, I say Captain Boomerang. And I'm not being hipster, I'm not trying to be, like, cool. It's a fact. I think the funniest scene would probably be when Deadpool tried to attack Colossus. Oh, yeah, that was good. Which culminated in the, the McAvoy or Stuart line. So I think that was probably the funniest for me. I thought it was good when his hands were all like that. Yeah. And then he goes and kicks him, and then that was pretty decent. Um, what, other, what other categories? See, this is like a cool award show. I kind of like this. What about best TV show? What? How about worst film? Worst film? Yeah. Suicide Squad. What? Suicide Squad. Are you joking? No. Dreadful. Really bad. You're just being ridiculous now. Uh, you're being ridiculous. Well, I haven't said mine yet. <laughs> oh no, it's going to be ridiculous. The worst film... Go on. I think, personally, would have to be... Does Tarzan count as a superhero? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no it did, no. Even that, that's better than Suicide Squad, by the way. I uh, know you've been, no, you've been ridiculous. No, you, no, it's better. You've just been boisterous. I mean, now. it's bad, but at least it told a decent story. Uh, worst film for me. Go on. The one I enjoyed the least. Oh, I've only seen Deadpool once, but that don't really mean that was a bad film. I'll give it. I'll give you an out here because technically, the Ninja Turtles are comic book characters. So if you want to say that. I'd have to say Civil War. D.A. <laughs> what are you on about? Okay, I guess Ninja Turtles then. Yeah, because they're comic book characters. Yes. Yeah. Well, I think you know it from watching that movie. See, now, what I'd, what I'd rate that on is a film I've seen the least. I've seen Suicide Squad about four times. I've seen Batman and Superman, like, must be creeping into double figures. I've seen Civil War about, I'd say about three, four times now. Uh, I think I saw X Men Apocalypse like maybe three times. So why don't know. we try, why don't we try and rank them? Uh, let's see. Right, so from worst to best. Okay, so now you know I'm going to say Suicide Squad, and you're not going to let that happen. Right, so Suicide Squad's the best. No, then Batman versus Superman. You said it. You if said you're it. Not if you're not going to take your list seriously, then roll back the tape. Roll back the tape. What, are we doing personal or are we actually like, are we putting our heads together or are we doing personal? Let's put our heads together and do one big list, right? Okay. So, as you just said, Suicide Squad's the best, so what's no, number two? No, you're not having it. You're <laughs> okay. not having it. I'll be non-partisan, I'll let Civil War be number two. Right, so no what's way. number three? No <laughs> what's number three? You can do your own list. <laughs> nah, okay then, so, uh, Civil War. I guess it'd be the best film. Okay. I will accept in protest Batman v Superman at two. You're not getting Suicide Squad anywhere near it. Okay. Number three, I would say probably Deadpool. Yeah, I guess. Four, Doctor Strange. Oh, Doctor Strange was good. Okay. So we got. Suicide Squad, the Ninja Turtles, and X Men. I think left. Is that is that all of them? Well, Suicide Squad's got to be next. Fine. And then, then, then Apocalypse, then the Turtles. Job done. Yeah. All right. So let's move on to TV shows. Best TV show. Right. This where. What are we saying here? Because we're only halfway through a TV season, so is it this season or is it last season? I say we do last season. No. Nah. Can't we do a mix of the last half season and the first first season? 
Okay. Well, so, not... so the end of last season and the start of this season. In right. With... I, see, I w- okay, we can do that. I would have said then, if we were doing this season, I would have said Arrow, but if we're throwing last season as well, then no way. So, for best, I would probably say Flash. Oh, wait, no. Was Daredevil this year? Or last year, even? That's 2016, wasn't it? I'll say Daredevil. Really? Yeah. For me. See, I'd say Supergirl. Really? What, season one? Mm. Well, the last half of season one and the first half of season two. Because season two's been strong. You've had Metallo, you've had Superman, you've had a lot of Lex Luthor references. You got his mum in there now. You got his sister. You've got Cyborg Superman, Hank Henshaw. You got the White Lantern. No, not White Lantern. White Martian. You got the Martian Manhunter. You got other aliens. You've got Monel. I thought it was good. I thought it was real strong. Yeah, but. He brought in some top characters. Parasite was in there. Okay, Jimmy Olsen's a bit whack as a superhero, but it's coming up strong. I'm telling you, this next half of the season, Super Supergirl season two, real, real strong. We'll have a discussion after the end of the season then, but based on last season, I can't. No uh, way. I'd say, I'd, okay, personal opinion, I'll put Supergirl at two based off the merit of the first half of season two. I'd say number one, Flash, because Flash rarely kind of puts a foot wrong. Okay. I, I think it's been that. strong since day one. Arrow, I think okay. I think it's just flopping. It's a fish. It's this a, season's good. It's a fl- it's a fish out of water and it's flopping on the side of the thing. Did you see Did you see the trailer for the next like thing? Right, no, I try to. Uh, you know, I don't mind you spoiling me. Generally, I try uh, to avoid them. Never go on. Oh well, that Laurel Lance is as we said. If you go back and watch the Arrow video we've already done, and there was speculation about who this Laurel Lance is. Apparently, it turns out it's Black Siren. Oh, see, too easy. Mhm. Do. No, All right, well, so we're saying what, Flash at 1, Supergirl 2, I'll go with that, then Daredevil 3 for me. Yeah, Arrow 4. Oh, see, but then you got a render in Gotham as well. I don't know whether you watched any of Gotham. I, no. Gotham's kind of always been strong for me as well. So I, I, I saw the first season, I didn't particularly enjoy I, it. I'd move him down a notch and put, um, I'd put Gotham at 2. No way. Because you got you got No way. Yeah. I'm giving Gotham at four. The the uh Mad Hatter, Jervis Tetch, he was pretty solid. Okay, uh, I didn't really like the fact that um the police commissioner, Michael Chickless, he was infected oh. by the blood and he's gone crazy. Oh. Uh, I think he was a bit boring. Uh the Mad Hatter was sick. Um I mean, they closed. They made this big thing about like all the villains escaping, all the kind of meta enhanced people escaping, and then it was kind of only in like one or two episodes, and then the main focus moved on to um, the Mad Hatter. The Riddler was good. I didn't really like. They were kind of gaying off the Penguin and the Riddler. Really? Yeah, pe- Peng Penguins Penguins gay. Okay. Yeah, uh-huh. and is and is proper in love with the Riddler. I thought the Riddler was sick because they had him kidnap Butch because Penguin killed Riddler's new girlfriend because is in love with him, <laughs> and like so they killed the girlfriend and then obviously Edward, uh, the Riddler, kind of somehow thought it was Butch because he set Butch up. And then, like, you had him kidnap Butch and, like, his girlfriend Tabitha. And, kind of, you, you had, like, the first kind of inclination towards the kind of the Riddler's torture games and stuff like that. You had her either cut her hand off, let her have her hand cut off, or kill Butch by electrocuting him. So that was pretty good. Um, and the next half's going to have the Jerome back in, who's pretty much a joke, you know what I mean? I think that's pretty much confirmed uh. now. Oh, you're not. You're it's not... good though. Did you see the first couple of episodes of season two? Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was good one, eh? It was Batman in the show. 
Br- little Bruce Wayne is. Is Batman in the show. Oh, Bruce Wayne's... Bruce? Is Batman in the show. <laughs> he will be. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't not. No. Yeah, he's getting there. He's boxing. No, Joker without Batman. That's stupid. He's boxing with Alfred. Well, you had the... Well, it, it, as you said, they had their first little meeting, didn't they? But it's not the Joker yet. It's just Jerome. Oh. You know, in, until, it, until his hair's green and his face is white, he's Jerome. That's awful. Not really. Just for that, for that alone, there's no way it's getting to two. I'll take it at four. Nah, because it's yeah. solid. It hasn't really put a foot wrong. That's kind of the show that I've kind of I've gone out my way. See, normally I'd leave Flash till a day later and just watch it when I'm eating my dinner. But Gotham, when it's out, I have to watch. You know what I mean? Well, it's good bit... for you. It's still top five. Congrats. <laughs> okay, so what after that then? We've still got... Arrow, we've got S.H.I.E.L.D. I I haven't watched any of any of Shield. I like Me either. Really? Yeah. Oh, so we just put that on bottom then. Jessica got... Jessica Jones was good. That was twenty fifteen though, wasn't it? Nah. Was it not? Don't think so. No. Cause Luke, yeah, I think it was because Luke Cage was this year, was well, wasn't it? Yeah, but you got. I think that was like that all kicked off in February. You got to bear in mind it all comes out at once. It's not like over a weekly period like Supergirl. Where like a season's like it takes like eight months to get done. What is it? I think it was released in like February. It was like only like a couple months after Daredevil, and it all comes out at once. So I think it did fall in there. I don't think. Okay, let's say it did. We'll throw it in. Luke Cage. I didn't see Luke Cage. Me neither. Okay, well, that go bottom as well. Mm. I think from the trailer it looked good, but I don't. I. It's not really. I'm Depends like if he can hold his own. I I'm mean, only really interested in Luke Cage with Iron Fist. I watched like a Heroes of Iron, but solo, yeah. So you watch? You're excited for the Defenders? Yeah. Okay. So, best character? When well, all of TV. Blimey. Yeah, I liked Harrison Wells. I thought it was pretty funny. Yeah, I think he's good as well. They always bring him back, so you know, I'd rate he's probably the best character in Arrow. Because, I mean... Flash. Yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> that's what, by the power of video editing, that's definitely what I said. <laughs> it, yeah, because they keep bringing him back, and if they want to kind of mix him up a bit, they can just get another one. They can ditch off this one and just get another one from another universe. See, I like the kind of the season two Wells from Earth 2 I like him yeah. the best probably this guy's a bit more funnier than that but I don't know whether his kind of desperate little act's gonna come off you know what I mean whether it's gonna get boring fast uh no oh what you mean this the season 3 version. yeah HR yeah HR yeah I think I don't even might. know why it's called HR Harrison something yeah, that must be like his middle I think, name. I think they, I think they explained it, but I can't remember. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> nah, but I definitely like this. I'd, I'd say because, say we cut it from like first half of season three and second half of season two, I'd have to say Earth Two, Harrison Wells. No, yeah, I agree. I liked him. What about um, worst character? Worst character. I'd have to say Oliver Queen. Really? Yeah. Go on. Why? Because. Okay, okay. I'll tell you what. I'll, ne- I'll negotiate because I'm a fair guy. Felicity Smoke. Because she's just coming off like a nagging broad. You know what I mean? She uh, was in, just, in this season, full of arrow, yeah, absolutely. Uh, your average childless woman. She's nagging it. <laughs> you know what I mean? I hate to say it in that. I'm all about strong, independent, intelligent, charismatic women being successful. But she's she's ruined it for herself. She was that, but now she's ruined yeah, herself. I, th- I think part of the crime with the character is that she was likeable mm-hmm. in the first couple of seasons. She was fun. Mm-hmm. As that kind of lot longing, you know, Miss Moneypenny who will never get with Bond. This is what happens when Bond was up with money, Penny. It's why you should never do it. Mm-hmm. It turns into this. I think uh, 
If cool. I'd have to say my second favorite character, I know we're on worse, but I'll just switch back because I can do that. Um, I'd have to say I like um, Heatwave, Mick Rory from DC yeah. Legends of Tomorrow because I think all the way through DC Legends of Tomorrow from the first episode, I've, al I've always thought Captain Cold and Heatwave were like funny, you know what I mean? And now obviously Captain Cold's kind of out of the picture, he's, he's still funny. Like in the crossover where, <laughs> where it's like, you can call me Supergirl and it's like, I'm not calling you Supergirl, I'm going to call you Skirt. I thought <laughs> that was a joke. It's, it's interesting how they've managed to make them work, because they were Captain Cold and Heatwave, they were kind of like Adam West Batman villains like super campy guys but it works he's funny he fits in the team I'll give you that exactly. I've, I've got another and then like at the end it's like oh yeah call me <laughs> to Supergirl I thought that yeah. was good as well his jokes yeah I, d I did wonder if once they killed off Captain Cold would he lose something or would he work about him he has I, oh, think, I... I think it's kind of added emotional depth to him because you don't really see much of that, you know what I mean? But it's still like got all his best qualities. It's still funny in that. It's still like no nonsense of it. I think he's really. I think he's integrated with the other member members of the team better as well. I've got another nomination for worst character though, and we're sticking with Arrow. You're gonna say Ragman? No. Oh, who then? I, mean, I think it's a lame effect, but no. Diggle's brother, Andy Diggle. Oh yeah. Awful. Awful. Yeah, I don't see the reason of bringing him back. There was no reason to bring him back. Literally no reason. Yep. I think there's no charisma to the actor. Exactly. With kind of John Diggle res having his res resolving his kind of strife with Deadshot, it's like there's no reason to really bring it all up. You know what I mean? They kind of made up at the end. Deadshot's dead. Get on with it. It's done. You know what I mean? There's no reason. I mean, what? What was the point? He was kind of like a double agent for Damien Dark. You could have just cut that character out and just had Damien Dark do his own legwork, you know what I mean? That entire season of Arrow was an abomination. In fact, if we're going to say worst show, did we say Arrow? I don't think we've got to worst show yet, have we? Oh, well, let's do it. Okay, then. Worst show, oh, worst show Arrow. I, I mean, don't... I will say with an asterisk, I do think this season has been better, but season four awful I'll agree with that I thought Damien Dark was rubbish I thought the characters was rubbish I thought Oliver Queen was rubbish so yeah the magic was kind of cool but even that was rubbish when they started doing like the totems and stuff like that and then that woman was like in one episode she started trying to teach Oliver Queen magic that was dumb it's like don't bother the flashbacks were a disaster I thought I thought that Felicity Smoke was at her worst. You had Laurel Lance die. So that's why I kind of I made no kind of effort to watch this season. I watched The Invasion and I watched a couple of other episodes when they cropped up. But apart from that, I, I've not even, you know what I mean? I made no effort to watch any well, of this, Arrow. This season's been an improvement because they've done away with a lot of that, there is no more Oliver and Felicity they've got rid of most of the team you know, at least Fia's not a hero anymore, at least for now but last season, yeah, dreadful and I can't. I nearly lost all hope for the show mm -hmm. exactly so I think see, it's annoying that the kind of you'd think that like <laughs> You know, Arrow was kind of the basis for the Flash, DC Legends of Tomorrow and all that and now they're coming up stronger than Arrow is. Even Supergirl's stronger than Arrow. I mean, when when they have when they give it artistic license and give it like free roam of any character they want, you know, Supergirl smashes it. You know, the effects are good. She 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 she's she's nice to look at. I'm not gonna lie. So it works. And I'm not just based in the whole kind of success of the show off the fact that she's a very attractive young woman. But I mean, to be honest, it's been solid. I think the only way this show can get better is if they kind of pull it out the bag and introduce Lex Luthor at the end. Oh, well, God, you don't want that. I don't want Lex Luthor fighting Supergirl. Lex, I don't think he'd be fighting Supergirl. 
I don't think there's any point. I think they can just have him pop up, so you know he's actually there. Mm, I don't know. I mean, I think the only reason I think you would have Lex Luthor appear in Supergirl is if you really did want to do a Superman TV show, which I don't see happening anytime soon. I think they're better off keeping him away. Well, I think because his sister Lena's kind of screwed him over, I think they could kind of pop up, you know what I mean? You could have him try and actually do something in person, and then him being, you want to know what, I'm to back off, you know what I mean? But that all depends on him getting out of prison, because I think he's serving like about 10 consecutive life sentences. Well, I mean, it's Lex Luthor. Never him before, yeah. That's what I mean. So, I figure they can have him pop up a little bit. I think I should play him. You're going to shave your hair? Oh, I'd be happy to. It'd be the role of a lifetime. Of course I'd shave my hair. It's like if if, if you got like the offer to play like Bruce Willis in the story of his life, would you shave your head? Well, it depends how old he is in the movie. You know, yeah, but if... A 20-something Bruce Willis had hair. I would not need to. <laughs> right, so... I mean, you look kind of like... Lex Luthor, the clone, the young guy that came back, but you know, like less butch, more like like Lex mixed with like Cletus. <laughs> Redneck Luthor. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I should totally do that. Be, I'd watch the show. I'd watch the show. Don't think you can stop me, Superman. <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> like, it's like <laughs> That's my audition tape, CW Tech Night. <laughs> right, so what other categories do you think that should be? Or do you think that co- that covers the whole thing? That covers, sweeps the board? Any last, any honourable mentions or last minute categories? What about what we're looking forward to in 2017? Lex Luthor and Supergirl. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah. Or more, mm-hmm. I figure they've got to pop him in, or pop. Su- I think Superman's going to come back for a season finale. But it's like if you bring him in, because I in the kind of mid-season you had Lena Luthor turn against her mum Lillian, and not kill all the all the aliens. So now they're at odds. So I mean, you've got to have her get Lex out of prison somehow, and then them turn against Lena, because I. You know what I mean? Yeah, the problem is you don't want to risk the show becoming too much like Superman, though, do you? Because he will overshadow her. It'd be like if you had a Batgirl TV show and then suddenly Bat- Batman popped up every five minutes and no one's going to care about Batgirl anymore. They're going to want Batman. Yeah, that's why I said season finale. If they whack him, if they whack Superman or Lex Luthor in the season finale, or like Maxwell Lord's not really been in it, hasn't been in it at all. So it's like... Cause they were kind of using him like a like a poor man's Lex though, weren't they? Mm, yeah, but like that's Supergirl's like a poor man's Superman. You know what I yes. mean? So I mean, Cat Grant's a poor man's Perry Wright and Lois Lane. Lucy Lane's obviously a poor man's Lois Lane. So I mean, fucking right <laughs> as well. You know what I mean? Yeah. And Jimmy Olsen's just Jimmy Olsen. Yeah, no, now except it's, not. Now he's got to be a superhero. He's just got to be a superhero. That's the one thing that bugs me about these CW shows. Everyone's a superhero. Hmm. Jim Olsen. He's, he's boring anyway, isn't he? Like, like, exactly. He's just got a shield and metal armour. I mean, personality-wise as well. He's very poor. So I'd say that pretty much wraps up this extravagant award show. Like, share, subscribe, comment. <laughs> I've been Sam. I've been Matt. This is the Superhero Hub, and we'll see you in the next up foul discussion.